This is an example video on how to apply Gauss's law to this particular charge configuration. So the situation is, at the center of this configuration we have an insulating sphere of radius A, and a positive Q charge has been placed on that insulating sphere. Then we have a region of empty space, and outside that is a conducting spherical shell, of um, which I see in blue. And then outside that is the rest of space. And we're asked to find the E field everywhere. So I've divided this configuration up into four regions. Region 1 is inside the insulating sphere. Region 2 is in the gap between the sphere and the spherical shell. Region 3 is inside the spherical shell. And region 4 is outside. So <clears throat> for regions 1 and 2, I will refer you to the previous video on using Gauss's law to find the uh, electric field everywhere for an insulating sphere. Uh, please note that in this video I have flipped the order of 1 and 2 from that video, but don't let that confuse you. And I've just quoted the results here. Uh, for inside the insulating sphere we have an electric field that is whose magnitude is KQR over A cubed. Uh, remember this is the, the somewhat surprising result that the field inside this insulating sphere <clears throat> progresses linearly as you, go, so you start from the center and move to the edge. And the field increases linearly in strength. Once you get outside of the insulating sphere, the field drops off as 1 over r squared, like we would expect. Um, <clears throat> and this is all easily derived from Gauss's law. So let us now move into region 3 and ask ourselves, what is the electric field? And this is just about the easiest calculation you're ever going to do, because remember, the spherical shell is a conductor. And by, uh, not by definition, but almost by definition, the electric field inside a conducting material is identically zero. Okay, So you might ask yourself, well, why? Well, one of the other... <clears throat> uh, remember, what happens when you... From the example in class, what happens when you put a conducting material into an external electric field? We said that the free charges inside the conducting material immediately realign themselves in order to create an internal electric field which exactly cancels the external electric field everywhere. And that is what is happening here. There will be a charge induced on the inner surface of this ring uh, which will create an electric field uh, inside that, that, uh, that spherical shell, I should say, not a ring. Inside the spherical shell it will create an internal electric field that at every point will exactly cancel uh, the external electric field from the charged sphere. Uh, <clears throat> so inside the conducting spherical shell, we don't even have to apply Gauss's law. We get that the E field inside is identically zero. And that leaves us with region four. So at region four, we again apply Gauss's law. I'm going to construct a spherical Gaussian sphere, or I guess I should say spherical Gaussian surface around this, a Gaussian sphere, if you will. Uh, and that's going to have a radius of R. Uh, again, it's not a sphere. Um, I can't really draw very well, but just use your imagination that there is a Gaussian sphere outside the conductor of radius R. And I'm going to apply Gauss's law. So let me go to a new sheet to do that. The arguments are the same as far as the geometry. I've got the integral of E dot dA, the electric flux, is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. So again, my electric field is constant everywhere along the surface of my Gaussian sphere, at least constant in magnitude. And it is everywhere perpendicular to the area vector, or in this case, my differential area vector. So when I do this integration, I can pull E out, integrate over the area, and I get 4 pi r squared, just like I always do. And that is equal to the Q enclosed. Well, what is the Q enclosed? It's the entire charge, uh, the entire charge of the whole system. So I've got. Uh, let me go back to my other slide. Q enclosed is going to be minus two Q plus. Sorry, that should be a capital. Minus two Q. That's the charge on the conducting spherical shell. Plus Q. That's the charge on the um, the insulating sphere over epsilon naught. Of course, we can all do the math. And what I get here. Uh, when I divide through by 4 pi r squared and I sum up my numerator on the right hand side I get that the magnitude of the E field is minus Q over 4 pi epsilon naught 
r squared. Of course, I can substitute in for the Coulomb constant k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, and this just becomes minus k q over r squared. And there you have it. Uh, it's pretty simple. Like I said in class, Gauss's law, when it's applicable, um, by far provides you the easiest way to calculate the electric field of a charge distribution. All right.